Hello, namescon.online. Welcome to this exciting session about domains essential to brand-based marketing. This session is brought to you by the Domain Name Association, which is now part of the Internet Infrastructure Coalition, I2C. And we're very happy to be with you here today. We've got a great panel representing registries, registrars, and others interested in the domain industry. And we're gonna have a great discussion about how a domain name is or isn't or should be part of your brand. And we'll talk about different ways brands can be leveraging not just their primary domain name, but also other domains for purposes of marketing and branding uh, and other ways to leverage the value of a domain name. So I'm gonna introduce each of our panelists. Actually, I'm gonna let them introduce themselves. And when they introduce themselves, I'm gonna ask them to give a few moments on their point of view of how a domain name is part of your brand. So we'll start with Jonathan Thomas, who's with us from Black Knight. Thank you, Jeff. I'm from Black Knight. We're Ireland's, uh, one of Ireland's largest web hosts and domain registrars. And I'm responsible for international marketing and communications. And from our perspective, the domain is the most important decision you're going to make if you're starting a business or if you already have a business and you need to get online. The mm -hmm. domain is how the world sees you. It is your unique name. And it, it triggers us to see people um, using free email addresses and using free services for their online identity and just relying on platforms like Gmail and Facebook when you should own all aspects of your online identity, in including your own domain name. Thank you, Jonathan. Next, I'll introduce you to Niha Naik from Radix. Niha. Hey, everyone. Thanks for having us, Jeff. Um, I'm Neha Naik, and I'm the Director of Channel Partnerships and Marketing at Radix. Um, Radix is the largest new TLD portfolio registry today with close to 6 million names under management. And we operate um, 10 extensions, including .online, .store, .tech, um, and a few others. From our perspective, I think, you know, just um, resonating what Jonathan said, but adding to that as well, your domain name is your business or your personal address um, in the virtual world. So it's all about your real estate online. Um, and that's what's extremely important about what you present of yourself um, in your domain name. And now, especially in the last few years with the advent of new domains, you can utilize both the left and the right of the dot to really come up with a meaningful name um, that can say so much more about your brand online. So we think it's a really important part of your overall brand. Thank you, Neha. Tim Smith is with the Canadian International Pharmacy Association. Tim? Hi, thanks, uh, Jeff, and uh, hello to everyone. Uh, and I'm uh, with you today from Winnipeg, Canada. Uh, and I do represent the Canadian International Pharmacy Association, CIPA, as we often refer to it. And we are a Canadian association of licensed pharmacies that sell pharmaceuticals and maintenance medications to individual patients with a uh, valid prescription. And we've been around for almost 20 years. And uh, what's noteworthy about us from a domain standpoint is that uh, our domain name is our brand, both for CIPA and for each of our members. Uh, so almost 20 years ago, our members chose uh, domain names that reflected the businesses that they do, the products they sell and the services they provide. And those became their uh, brands and in fact became their company names in many cases. Thank you, Tim. And next, uh, Joe Alanya has a tremendous amount of experience in the industry, both on the registry and registrar side. Joe? Thanks, Jeff, and thanks for having me here. Yeah, I've uh, been in the industry for over 15 years. I spent uh, time over at the Central NIC registry when it was very small. Um, also with Affilius recently, and uh, in between those two jobs, I worked at 101 Domain, which was an international brand-based registrar. And, uh, you know, I'm excited about sharing information, you know, about the idea of brand-based marketing and choosing a domain name, uh, building your business around that, tapping into traffic that, that is around you, and then driving that back to your website and keeping that so that you have full con control over your online marketing destiny. 
Thank you, Joe. And I realize I didn't uh, introduce myself. I'm Jeff Sass. I'm the CMO, Chief Marketing Officer, and co-founder of Doc Club Domains. And it's my pleasure to um, moderate this panel for you. So when we think about um, domain names as part of your brand, or each, even actually as your brand, it's, it's kind of interesting because back in the early days of the dot-com boom, it was very common for businesses to actually use their domain name as their brand. Amazon was amazon.com, GoDaddy was godaddy.com. And many businesses used the dot-com, their, their domain name as their brand. Then after the, the infamous dot-com bust, that sort of uh, lost favor and people started dropping the extensions from their brand name. But now in recent times, especially with the widespread growth in internet usage and businesses going online and with the influx of all these new domain name extensions um, that have meaning like .club and .online um, that really add something to that uh, word to the right of the dot, to the left of the dot, excuse me, we see this trend coming back. We've seen in, in the dot club space, companies like gear.club, which is actually a racing game. Their brand name is gear.club. That's the name of the game. That's on the box. That's on the icon if you install the game on your phone. So we're seeing this trend come back in a number of cases. And I'd like each of you to, to tell me your thoughts on, you know, if you're starting a new business, why should you consider using your domain name as your actual brand name? Niha, do you want to start? Sure. Um, so I think you, know, you covered a little bit of it, Jeff, but um, I'd look at it in two or three different ways. Um, if you were, let's say, owning a category name, like we had met the Meredith group that owns magazine.store, and they've owned that entire category of e-commerce, with magazines, right? So they want to go out there for their marketing. They would use magazine.store and all their social media and all their branding. And that's what they want you to arrive at when you're looking for magazines online. So it makes sense for them to use that. Similarly, we have a uh, marketing agency called Louder Online, and there's a perfect fit for them with louder.online. They actually moved from uh, CCTLD to louder.online. So I think if the domain as a whole lends to what your brand really is, um, it makes complete sense to do that. Um, and the only other perspective I'd add is that, you know, sometimes the domain name can also add a category to your name. For example, CES, they use CES.tech. Um, so CES is the brand, but tech tells you a little bit more about the category that they belong to, which is they cater to the tech community. So there's different ways that, you know, domain names can really be part of your brand. Jonathan, as, as a registrar, from your point of view, would you recommend your clients to actually use their domain name as their brand? Yeah, we would actually. And many of, most of our clients are based in Ireland itself. And the .ie domain name is very critical to online success in Ireland because it's actually now more popular than the traditional .com and, and other domain names. So we, when we, when we help new businesses get online and when we give our recommendation, we kind of say, yeah, use the .ie domain name. And there are other situations where let's say you can't secure your brand name in the traditional .com, then using the, you know, the new TLD in your brand name actually helps you be found online in the search engines and whatnot. So it's, it it's, we kind of, advocate yeah use the domain name in your in in, in your brand name um, because it's a lot of the you know big brands have already kind of captured the standard do domain names and so this helps differentiate you from them and make sure people can find you because at the end of the day still a lot of people will will google search you when they're looking for you so it's important to to make sure that they know the whole name so and in some cases actually the the because of the new extensions that have meaning, the domain name can really be an exact match for your business name or your brand. So if you are a club, exactly. having that dot club extension is actually part of your name. If you were already called, you know, um, the chaos club and now you have chaos.club, it makes perfect sense. Or if you're an agency, you know, using a dot agency um, just makes it simpler and it's part of your name. So I think that's, that's um, something that's been, um, 
broadened by the fact that you have all these choices of extensions that have meaning uh, in addition to the generic extensions. Tim, did you have anything you wanted to add? Well, I was just gonna say that for, for new businesses, of course, um, uh, using one of the new extensions can also be a way of um, assisting people in doing searches. If they do know, uh, as we're talking about the uh, new extensions as being categories, it can help people find the, the club they're looking for or the service that they're looking for. So that's, um, that is a positive attribute of the, of the new extensions as well. Um, I think for existing businesses and thinking of my members who have been uh, around for uh, you know 20 years, um, the dot coms that they carry and in some cases the dot CAs that they carry because of, of our Canadian uh, residency um, are well established and they have a lot invested in those existing um, in existing domains. So I wouldn't see a mature business in our case uh, moving to uh, a new top level domain, but I certainly see the application for new businesses. But they're still using, your members are using their domain as their brand. So they might call themselves somethingpharmacy.com and that's how they refer to themselves to their customers and in their marketing. Uh, yeah, so they, they uh, as a matter of fact, in many cases, when you write a check to make your purchase, you write it to that dot com. That's the, actually the business name that is behind the brand. So it's a very, uh, it is a very strong brand. And as a matter of fact, because, um, because we um, are in the prescription business and the prescription refill business, we have people coming back to us every 90 days. So having a highly identifiable brand and website name is very helpful in people being able to continue their service, but also being able to refer new people, uh, you know, sharing with families and friends who you do business with. Uh, the, um, the website name, that brand becomes very, um, very powerful. Joe, from your perspective um, and your experiences both on both sides of the fence as a registrar and as a registrar, um, what's your feeling about using domain names as your actual brand name? Well, I've had a chance over, all over the years to really observe the effectiveness of different strategies. And I think, you know, even in the last 15, 20 years, business has changed like crazy. Uh, the pandemic has uh, accelerated that change, in fact. And I do believe that if you don't know how to market online, you really don't know how to market today. And if you don't understand domain names, you don't know how to market online. Um, to me, a domain name is your brand. You go back 10 or 20 or 30 years into business and trademarks were what was important. You know, you wanted to get a trademark so that when you used your business name, people knew it was you and you protected yourself from other people uh, trying to you know, capitalize on the money that you spent to make your name famous, okay? Today, domain names are basically, you know, just look at how you know, the legal community has come into the domain name world because they wanna protect domain names. They're the same thing. And so, whereas before we use a physical address, today to get business, we use a virtual address. Okay, so to me, brand-based marketing really begins with a great domain name. You choose something that's easy to remember, that summarizes all the little things we talk about, about what's a good domain name. You tap into sources of traffic, the Twitters, the YouTubes, the Googles, you know, your SEO, and then you drive that to your website and you try to retain those, you know, users and consumers and customers. And if and, and you can use different platforms within the realm of your of your website, like you've done today with us, Jeff, by using, uh, you know, SAS.club, and we all entered this Zoom meeting through your domain. Uh, and the good thing about it is, if you don't like the platform you're using, your domain name makes it very easy to just switch to another one. So you protect yourself in so many ways. But the key thing is, the domain name really is your way of doing business. The domain name gives you the ultimate control or over your marketing destiny. So uh, domain names at the very base should be your brand. A great domain name is a multiplier. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Joe. And thanks for hijacking the, uh, the meeting there. Um, <laughs> you know, a couple of things to unpack uh, from what you said. So one thing, you know, it's interesting, you know, 
yes, there's search. And we always hear this argument that, well, you know, we don't need a domain name. People can search and find us. But what people forget when you say that is when you search, there's something called search results. You're not just going to see the one domain name you were looking for. You're going to see tons and tons of other results. And if you're trying to drive traffic or gain the attention of potential customers, um, you don't want them to be distracted by those search results. You want them to only see you. When you're using a domain name as, as your brand or when you're using a domain name in a marketing campaign as a call to action, think of it as a tunnel where you're drawing someone into that tunnel and at the end of the tunnel is just you. <laughs> There's nothing else to distract them, right? It's a direct path to you on the internet um, without them being distracted by other search results, by out, without them finding the wrong site by mistake because they had a similar name, uh, et cetera. So, so it's really important in that regard. And I think people forget that. They're too um, quick to say, well, people can just search for me. Yeah, but when they're searching for you, they're seeing more than you, right? When they're using your domain, it's a direct path to you. And I think that's very important. You also mentioned briefly trademarks, um, and I just want to bring up briefly, and, and if anyone else wants to comment on it, last year, the Supreme Court made a, a very interesting ruling with regard to Booking.com, and they ruled that Booking.com could trademark their whole name, Booking.com, and that was somewhat controversial because the word booking by itself is a very generic term that normally um, would not be able to be trademarked. So that has some positive implications for businesses using their domain as their brand, provided that the public recognizes them that way. That was one of the key points of the ruling. Uh, does anyone want to comment on that further? So, Joe, oh, Tim? Yeah, uh, let me uh, just, uh, um, I want to pick up on that. Um, uh, and maybe later I'll talk a little bit about your search comments as well. Um, but uh, I, you know, I think uh, when you look at my members again, uh, you know, they are um, identified by their name uh, and they want to protect that name. So there'd be, I, I think that's a positive thing to be able to use your .com and to be able to, to protect it in that way. So um, I, I certainly support that. Great, Joe, were you going to say something? I was only going to say that I look at domain names as just as important as a trademark today. I mean, you can trademark whatever terms you want for a reasonable cost today. To get a reasonable domain name can cost you millions. So uh, it just illustrates how important good domain names are. And by the way, I know domain names don't have to co cost millions. Uh, the point is that they are just as important, if not more important, in my view, than a trademark. Great. Um, Neha had mentioned different uses of domains. Um, you talked about um, category killers and, and taking on other domains besides your primary domain. So when, when someone, when, when you try to get someone interested in, in one of your domains at Radix and they say, well, I already have a domain name. You know, we have a domain name. Why do, why do we need more? You know, wh what's the point? Uh, how do you answer them? Yeah, that's a common um, response to that. Um, so yeah, I think there's multiple different ways that domain names can be used. Um, we've seen some really interesting use cases with, let's say Emirates, right? So they're an airline brand. They have Emirates.com, which is their primary website, but then they have an Emirates.store, which is for their merchandise. Um, similarly, Cristiano Ronaldo, who's a really famous footballer, uh, huge fan following, huge social following, his brand is CR7, and he has CristianoRonaldo.com, but then he has CR7 fragrances.store and CR7 denim.store. So when he's out, you know, promoting that in his social media as a call to action, like you said earlier, Jeff, if he wants to talk about his fragrances, then he's taking users directly to CR7 fragrances.store, right? So there's definitely a bunch of categorization that you can use. Uh, we've also seen some really interesting use cases with um, like Intel. They have a brand, they have a website on insights.tech, which is just about their tech um, advances, research, you know, their white papers and stuff like that. So brands can find interesting ways to integrate their primary websites, but then also these additional um, websites that might be, you know, specific call to actions that they want to use can be campaign based. Um, can be, um, you know, to add different value from different perspectives on that front. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think, you know, we see with Doc Club, a lot of brands use the Doc Club name to point to their loyalty or reward program. So it's in addition to their main domain. So Swatch, the watch company, Swatch.com is their primary website. Swatch.club points to their Swatch Club and the section of their website with information about their club. So there are many, many uses for multiple uh, um, domains. Jonathan, from, from the registrar perspective, when you're helping a, a business get their first domain name, are you also talking to them about uh, getting a portfolio of domains and the different ways they could use them? Yeah, and that's, that's kind of what we advocate because, because when you have a business online, it's important to, to think that you're not necessarily gonna be doing the same single thing when you're online. Um, and having multiple domain names in the new TLD space, it allows you to kind of separate out new business units. It allows you to create new lines of business that you wouldn't before without sacrificing the, the authority of your main website and your main domain. So I know in my own personal businesses, I've used the new TLDs to, to sort of launch marketing programs that were for short term or to launch a new line of business that, that doesn't quite fit on the main website, but still uses that main brand. And then, you know, one of the most important things with all these domains is brand protection because you need to protect your brand online and it's easier to own the domain name than to get it after the fact of somebody else taking it. So we kind of advocate if there's any line of business you think you're going to go in in the future, you should secure the relevant domain for it because the cost of doing it now is much less than doing it later if somebody else grabs it. Yeah, and on the protection side, um, it, since there are so many new extensions, if there are extensions that are particularly relevant for your business or your vertical that you're in, those are the ones in particular that you would want to consider for protection. So if you're you know, a, a, an apparel manufacturer, dot clothing is important to you. Dot pizza, maybe not so much. Um, so you want to take that into consideration uh, as well, I think. Yeah, and, and, and to add to that, like, you know, get the dot store, get the dot shop, get the get the key things that a business would use just because you don't know when you're going to need it. Yep. Let, let's talk a minute about marketing and leveraging a domain as part of your brand marketing. Um, you know, the domain name in many respects is the ultimate call to action because when the consumer sees a domain name, they know what to do. And that's why even though domains are technically a digital um, medium, you can actually use domain names in non-digital mediums. You see domain names in billboards, on the side of a bus, at the end of a TV commercial, in a radio ad, or in a podcast. And when people hear or see a domain name, even if they're not on a digital platform, they know what to do. So that's why almost every advertisement ends with a domain as a call to action. So domains for campaigns can be very clever. Um, one case a few years ago, um, one of the agencies for Taco Bell did a mobile campaign and they registered and used the domain TA.CO, which of course spells taco. Do, do any of you have any good examples of uh, brands leveraging domains for clever or impactful marketing campaigns? Neha, you must have some examples. When we're talking about um, out there branding, yes. Um, I was thinking more on the lines of, um, you know, brands in our space today that are doing a really good job of leveraging um, their uh, brand online. And a different take that we saw come through in terms of um, the pandemic and events going online, right? So we saw a bunch of them actually moving to a dot online. Namescon.online is a great example of that. But in addition to that, you know, we've had Podfest Expo dot online. So they're basically resonating with telling their brands that, you know, they, they're an event and they're online and they're moving from the offline to online space. So I don't have any other uh, examples on the line of CA dot CO, but this comes to mind for sure. Joe, have you had any um, examples in your in your um, dealings? Yeah, I want I wanted to uh, just point this thought out. Um, I do believe that it's important to secure, you know, any domain names that are relevant to what you do. I mean, there are, you know, manufacturers and wholesalers. They might have a product that they'll want to promote at a certain domain name, 
but maybe they're not retailers. So they're not necessarily interested in, you know, uh, mass markets. But one thing that I think is important is uh, to use your domains in a way that has that that shows consistency around the the main uh, idea. So if you're if you have a business with whatever name dot com or dot store or dot online, uh, you might want to get the dot org as an example because maybe at some point or or a dot charity maybe at some point you'll be running a campaign that is nonprofit based and uh, you can use your name dot charity dot org whatever one you want to use for that nonprofit campaign uh, promotion. Um, you said something that I think is really key, Jeff, and that is domain names are media. And they're, they're very focused and very like uh, cu customers know what to do with them. And you can say whatever you want. I mean, with the, the length of characters and the length of choices today, you can give an entire message right within a domain name so that people can act on it right away. Yeah, I think, um... You know, the, the thing that's changed now is with everyone online and, and certainly um, the pandemic has accelerated the adoption for many businesses, many people who never need, thought they needed to be online suddenly realized they had to. Um, it's no longer an adjunct, you know, in the early days and part of the reason why some of these brands are still stuck on the idea of, well, I've got one domain name and that's all I need is because that was an alternative to their physical location. Yes, they had a physical place and they had their .com or their domain name and that was their online place. But when everything is online and you need to consider how you can have a strategy that for your brand that involves multiple domain names, whether they're pointing to different sections of your website, whether they're representing your events, whether they're representing you know, your blog or your app in other ways, you wanna have a portfolio of domains that, that your brand can use to broaden your access online to your customers. And we talked a lot about websites and, and your presence online, but domains are also very important for email. I know, Jonathan, you, you had some thoughts on that. Yeah, uh, recently we had, a, had an issue here in Ireland where uh, one of the major uh, ISPs, Aircom, used to offer a free email service, a lot like Gmail. And that became very popular in Ireland and it became the default email address for a lot of small businesses. They thought, registering this free email address counted as getting online. Well, this last year, Aircom decided that they were getting rid of their free email service after like 20 years. And they were gonna, they were either gonna, you had to start paying a high monthly fee to keep the email address, or you had to just let, let, it, let it die. And that issue was that you've got this email address on billboards, on the side of white vans, all over, driving all over Ireland. And so that is the online identity for you, there's a lot of places. So our key thing is basically saying that getting the right domain name is the bare minimum you need to do for online marketing now. And having a free email address relying on somebody else's platform is just not gonna work. And we, we see this now again with people getting Facebook pages or Instagram pages, and that counts to them as getting online when that doesn't count as getting online. You're still playing in somebody else's playground so you need to control your online identity and having the right domain is key for that so that no no service that you rely on can just cut you off because they have a change in business because when you're relying on something free on another platform um you you can't you just can't rely on that because when it's given away you're the product not the product you're using and so it's very key to control all aspects of that because then you'll have you know situations where if you were a plumber, a local plumber, and didn't have your domain name, well, that, that free email address doesn't work anymore. And now it's still on the site of all your vans. What are you going to do? Well, you need to, you need to get your online entity. And it's a lot cheaper than, you know, it's only a domain name and some email hosting. And so that's, that's the kind of the thing that we've been banging on about is control all aspects of your online identity because, you know, just having a free service is not going to do. Yep. And that's true for not just the email, but just in general, you want to control your presence online with a domain name you control. We're pretty much um, out of time right now. So I want to give everyone a chance for a quick, uh, any final remarks before we close? We'll start with you, Joe. Thanks, Jeff. And thanks to NamesCon for allowing me to have a, a little spot here. Um, just to uh, 
um, the point that uh, Jonathan made a moment ago, this is possible. I mean, I, I think a lot about GeoCities in the early days of the internet. There were people who spent countless hours building an online presence there, and they did go under. Uh, and so people lost all that investment. Um, so control is super important. And um, I think you, it's important to realize that when you rely on Google and Twitter and Facebook and all the large uh, media companies that are out there, you really, you're basically uh, giving them control because let, let's face it, if, if, if people are searching on Google and that's how they're going to find you, they're going to see all your competitors right next to you. Yep. So good domain names matter. And uh, it, it's something that does require marketers attention. Great. Thank you, Joe. Niha, briefly. Yeah, just, um, you know, we were talking about this a little earlier, but we've seen so much happen in the last couple of weeks with brands getting or people getting deplatformed. Uh, we've seen TikTok being banned in India and a bunch of other countries. Um, so just resonating what Joe and, you know, a bunch of others here said that a domain is your brand identity. It is what you're investing to build your brand out there. So it makes sense for you to own it. And now you have the options of going really creative with a plethora of getting your exact match brand in one or more TLDs to do different things online. So the opportunities exist. Um, and we hope that more brands see the value in taking up more domain names. Great, thank you. Tim. Uh, yeah, thanks. I want to sort of cast back to your comments on searches. Uh, and, uh, you know, in, in, in my business, people look for Canadian online pharmacy or Canadian pharmacy or the name of their product. And in searches, what uh, often will happen is that uh, there will be some um, unknown domain name that comes up in the searches. Uh, and when you click on that, uh, when you click on that search, you end up being transported to a, to a different or redirected to a different domain name, uh, which also redirects to a completely different um, website name. So I think, uh, and, and those are, it's not the only signs of rogue activity, but it is a very large sign of rogue activity. So there is trust to be gained by having your domain name identical to your website name and having it integrated into your brand. So um, I, I would just uh, leave with that. That's a great point, Tim. Thank you for bringing that up. Trust is everything, and, and, and your domain name is a large part of the trust you um, engender in your customers. Jonathan, final comment. Yeah, I just want to reiterate the point I made earlier that having a good domain is the bare minimum you need to do to get online and have a good marketing presence online. And people don't like to think about marketing because it's boring, but if you're starting a business or you run a business that's going to need online, you've got to think about marketing and having the good domain is the bare minimum you need to do. Great. Well, thank you. Thank you to my panelists. And on behalf of the Domain Name Association and the I2 Coalition and Dot Club, I want to thank everyone for joining us today and hope you enjoy the rest of your NamesCon.online. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Thanks Jeff. everybody.